Hello everyone. In this video, I will be doing an update about the Delphi trial that I have been keeping up with on this channel. Delphi murders. Defense rests its case, state, to call a rebuttal witness. On day 17 of the Delphi murders trial, the defense rests its case defense attorney Bradley Rosai started Wednesday's proceedings by announcing the defense was finished presenting its case. The jury was taken out of court at 9.15 a.m. The state and defense discussed jury instructions. At one point, the defense team left the courtroom, which remained silent for a long period of time before Allen's attorney returned. The prosecution and defense ultimately had no objections to the jury instructions. Richard Allen will not testify in his own defense. Rosai asked Special Judge Fran Gull for additional time to submit a proposal on how to judge the credibility of Allen's incriminating statements. Gull said the defense had until the end of business to submit one. The prosecution was set to call some rebuttal witnesses on Wednesday. Court was waiting for one of those witnesses to arrive, leading to a delay and a court break. Sources said Wednesday's proceedings would likely wrap up with the lunch break. The prosecution and defense will deliver their closing arguments on Thursday, setting the stage for the case to go to the jury. Each side will get around two and two and a half hours to deliver closing arguments. Gull said she may offer a gentle reminder if attorneys go too long. The prosecution rested its case on day 12 of the proceedings. Allen's defense team spent several days poking holes in the state's case against their client. Allen is charged with four counts of murder in the February 2017 deaths of Abby Williams and Libby Gurman near the Manon High Bridge, Indiana, state police announced his arrest October 2022. Defense testimony included experts who suggested Allen's time in solidarity confinement may have affected his mental state, leading him to make false confessions the defense also showed multiple videos of Allen in custody. During day 16 of the proceedings, Allen's attorneys cast doubt on the confessions and the tool mark analysts that the state said matched Allen's Sig Saucer P226 to an unspent bullet found at the murder scene. They also called the digital forensic expert to the stand who said her analyst showed a headphone jack was inserted into Libby German's phone at 5.45 p.m. and removed about five hours later. At 2.15 p.m. Wednesday, a third of the floor courtroom in Carroll County Courthouse, Special Judge Fran Goal turned to a jury of seven women and five men, plus three alternates, and said, Ladies and gentlemen, you have now heard all the evidence in this case. With that, the sequestered jurors filed out of the courthouse to return to their Lafayette Hotel rooms to rest up for Thursday back in Judge Gull's courtroom, when they will hear up to five hours of closing arguments and then instructions from the bench before retreating behind closed doors to debate the fate of Richard Allen and Delphi Mann accused of killing Abby Williams, 13, Libby German, 14, near Manon High Bridge on February 13, 2017. Carroll County Prosecutor Nichols McClendland will go first, not utilizing his full two and a half hours at the start, to remind jurors that investigators have a photograph of what they believe is Allen's car 
not far from the murder scene, and a bullet found near the bodies that an Indiana State Police expert testified came from Allen's gun, and confessions to his wife and his mother and prison psychiatrist that he killed the girls and had exclusive knowledge about a white van that may have driven by as he was attempting to assault the girls and his own statement that he was walking on a nature path to the bridge that day. Lead defense attorney Bradley Rosie will go next and will make his final attempt to convince the jurors that investigators arrested the wrong man, that Allen's DNA was not at the crime scene, and the girl's DNA was not found on Allen's clothes or knives or car, that the state police test that linked the found bullet to his handgun was flawed and an apples to oranges comparison, that social media was awash with references to white van during the early parts of the investigation, that Allen suffered from psychosis while in solitary confinement in the state prison cell, and made false confessions. The investigation was botched from the start. Allen's own voluntary interview from 2017 was lost in the files until two years ago, and no witness positively identified Allen as being on the scene that day, and that is certainly a problem to try to prove to a jury that he did it, especially if they lost the information, in my opinion. Then Mick Leland will give his final closing argument, and Judge Gall will give jury instructions with emphasis on the concept of resembled doubt, the credibility of Allen and witnesses, and a reminder that Allen's decision to not testify on his behalf cannot be held against him. Then it will be up to jurors, all four Wayne residents who have lived away from home and their families and jobs since October 17th, to select a four-person review their notes to take straw polls and then begin debating whether Richard Allen should face 65 years in prison or more for the murders of Abby and Libby more than seven and a half years, their possible verdicts are guilty or not guilty or hung jury if they can come to an agreement. And also, I think that this is going very quickly. I think that hypothetically, you know, somebody were to be like in a prison camp, like I was reading about the Vietnam War and the people to confess certain things. And a lot of times they would lie when they would be interrogated by the Viet Cong. Also, in South Vietnam, there was prison camps there as well. So, basically, I think that it's something to take into consideration about how the mind being broken can do to a person. And also, there just seems to be interesting points from both sides, and you could comment below your thoughts. I'd like to hear your opinion about this topic. Thank you.